Hey folks, Sirdar here. In a previous Dev with Sirdar video, I demonstrated how you could create an electron-like app but without the overhead of Electron by way of web browser components that are already installed in your system. Now I'm going to show you how to do the same thing with Python using the Eel library. Eel lets you create Python applications with web front ends using whatever web browser is already installed in the system. The web front end automatically launches and connects to the Python backend, which runs locally. And then when you close the browser that you're running your app in, the eel application automatically shuts down. So let's take a look at a simple example of an eel app. First, we have here the Python side of the app. It's quite minimal. After setting up the eel components, we can then define functions in Python that we want to expose to the front end. And this we do with the expose decorator. You'll see in a moment how we make use of this function. Then we launch an instance of our web browser, which will be automatically connected with the application. Incidentally, if you want to, you can use a bundled copy of Electron instead of the system browser. But the whole point is that the system browser is pre-included. We don't have to bundle it. When the browser is launched, it will then load a web page that we've defined. Here, it's named index.html. That is our front end. Now, we can use more than one page, of course. This is just the page that we use to kick things off. So in the HTML front end, we have a little code that will greet the user and prompt them with a text box and a push button. And we also have an image background, too, just to pretty things up. And then we have some JavaScript, which wires all of this up for functionality with the eel backend. Now, to use that, we have to include a component, eel.js. This is supplied automatically by eel, and it handles connectivity between front end and back end. So what this script does is it wires up our page for certain behaviors, and it also relays information to and from the back end. So the first thing I've done here is I've wired up this push button to the function get name. So when we click it, get name is invoked. And then what it does is it takes the contents of the text field that is on the page, and it sends it to the back end. It sends it to the return greeting function on our Python side. The return greeting function then returns some response which is interpreted here as a JavaScript promise. I then pass the results of that promise onto another function, setName, which takes the result and places it on the page. So now let's see all of this in action. I've already started an instance of the program, which launches a browser window. So if I go there and I type my name in the box and click the button, you'll see the prompt changes. And this is done by way of passing the text in the box back to the Python side of things, which returns new text that we can use on the HTML and JavaScript side of things. So we have two-way communication between the front end and the back end. As you can see, all of this is pretty unobtrusive from a developer point of view. If I wanted to use some rich front end JavaScript framework like Svelte, it wouldn't be difficult to integrate that into what we're doing. Or if I wanted to generate web pages from the back end using templates, I could do that with Jinja 2, a template engine in Python that can be installed alongside Eel. Or I could use most any templating engine in Python. Eel's not particular about how back end content is generated. The only thing that matters is that you include the eel.js connectivity component on the front end. So to sum up, with Eel, you can write desktop Python applications that have web front ends. They use the system's own browser instead of a bundled browser component, so the resulting app has a smaller footprint. And the only requirement for the front end code is a single JavaScript include. So you have a lot of latitude in terms of what JS front end you want to work with. That's it for this episode. If you liked it, leave a comment below. And don't forget to follow Dev with Sirdar and InfoWorld on Facebook, YouTube, and InfoWorld.com.